Hello, this is Dr. Kay Sweetser from San Diego State University, and today I'm going to talk to you about what makes a good situation analysis and how you can set yourself up for success in your campaign. So the situation analysis essentially serves as the R in the RPI process. So this really is a culmination of all of your research, but it's done in a way that um, allows your client to really feel seen and understood as well as set you up for the different tactics and strategies that you want to later suggest and implement in your campaign. So to me, your situation analysis first has to start with a strong narrative, some sort of a story that really catches the attention of the reader. And you don't want to drone on too long uh, because, of course, you want to keep everything nice and tight in your writing, but you definitely have to create interest. And so as you're writing, think about how can I summarize what my client's issue is or uh, some sort of an anecdote that is central to what I'll be dealing with in the campaign to catch the reader's attention and to make the reader really interested in what's to come. How can I set the stage? Almost think of it like a lead, like you would see in a uh, newspaper story or a feature article, something that really sets the stage as an anecdote to get the reader interested. Now from there, you have a couple of different options in how you want to organize the content in your situation analysis. You definitely need to talk about your client. So you need to go through the history of what it is that your client has done, how your client may um, have tackled this particular issue that your client is facing previously, what your client's organization structure is like, whatever is really relevant to the campaign. You want to make sure that you have enough of a deep dive on your client so that your client, again, feels seen, feels understood, feels like as the campaign book rolls on that you really understand who the client is and what the client is trying to achieve. And so if you're gonna be doing a campaign for say some sort of an annual event, well you want to go through what types of uh, events have happened in the past for the client and you know detail those sorts of pieces in there as well. Now as you're writing this like client history, uh, where the client is at right now section, you want to make sure that you're using all of the concepts of writing without bullshit. So you don't want to, in your writing, say things like, this organization was founded in 1979. Like that is so boring, right? You're, you're a communicator. So find a way to use that storytelling experience and find a way to create a narrative that really means something to the client and that really is going to catch the reader's attention and hold the reader the entire way through. So not only did that have passive voice in it, so you wouldn't write a sentence like that ever, um, it's definitely not an interesting way to go about telling the story of um, how the client had started and what their origins were and bringing us up to speed on the relevant pieces today. So do not sleep on this section of uh, going through what you need to say about your client. And it's gonna vary for every single situation analysis, but you definitely need to dig into the important parts of what your client um, has done and um, how they relate to the issue or the event or whatever it is that your campaign is going to encompass. Then, uh, at some point, you need to also do a competitor analysis. So the competitor analysis looks as a um, sort of a, uh, a different way. You can think of uh, competition in, in, in many different ways here. But the competitor analysis is going to showcase what similar organizations, either by structure or by issue or by um, you know where where the organizations are located or how they're run. It's going to showcase other organizations and give uh, the best practices of what they're doing and compare it to what the client is doing. And so, um, for example, there was one client that we had uh, previously. The um, the college. Uh, 
uh, College Football Hall of Fame. And for the College Football Hall of Fame, what that particular campaign team did with their competitor analysis is they didn't just focus on other sports halls of fame or other college sports uh, type um, of museums. They also looked at museums that were going to be um, co-located in the same area that the College Football Hall of Fame is located in. So they were looking at the downtown Atlanta competitors that uh, they were basically vying for attention from if somebody has half a day that they want to spend uh, going to some sort of um, a museum or some sort of an attraction in Atlanta. And so that was a different way to look at a competitor because the competitor wasn't, not all of the competitors were actual sports related or college related or Hall of Fame related. Of course, they had, you know, a little bit of each of that in there, but then some of them were competitors for, you know, who the College Football Hall of Fame was going to be competing for with regard to getting those target audiences and attracting them. Um, so your competitor analysis is an important piece. And as you do this competitor analysis, you know, your organization knows already a lot about their competitors. So when you're writing it up, make sure that you're really doing a deep dive. Don't just give me the surface information about what the competitors are doing that, oh, these this is uh, their mission and they do this event annually and they have a newsletter. Like, I'm sure the client knows that really go deep and tell me something that's relevant to your client that shows that you really looked into that competitor and that you're pulling the best information that you can from the competitor as you put together your situation analysis. So uh, another piece that you're going to want to cover is secondary research. And I often use secondary research um, to sort of uh, transition between that like really interesting anecdote narrative that you have in the beginning and then getting into the issue at hand. Um, and sometimes I do it before I even get into the client. And the secondary research piece is going to be where you rely on other studies that have been done, uh, typically white papers, that set up an understanding of um, your issue, your problem, um, you know, the things that are related to what your, your publics are grappling with that are surrounding your present campaign. So if it is something that is uh, an event that is aimed at PR students, you might look at, um, you know, what that generation is like right now. So, you know, what is different from this generation from other generations? If we're going to create an event for PR students, what are their unique interests and how do they differ from previous generations? What is the job market like? What do they need to know as and what are they interested in as they finish up their college career and then enter the workforce? And so all of that information is stuff that I can get from a number of different white papers that really kind of put into context what the issue is that I'm dealing with. And so don't go light on your secondary research because this would be the place where you probably end up failing the most uh, if, that's, if that's the road you take because you really want to layer in what um, this other uh, proven knowledge is out there and, and shore up the recommendations that you're eventually going to be making. Um, so uh, separate from the secondary research, you're going to go into, um, in your situation analysis, your primary research that you have done on, on behalf of your, of your client. Um, and this is the research that is um, very specifically going to inform your campaign. And so with your primary research, you're probably going to do a survey and you're probably going to do um, qualitative interviews um, and a stakeholder analysis, right? You may do a content analysis, you may analyze social media. There's there's a lot of different options that you can do in here. I would take uh, one method at a time and walk through that method in a very top line level. This is the baseline. This is where we're at. Not into the weeds like a research report that's going to have, you know, how exactly things were measured and, you know, super detailed about the um, subjects that were in the study and um, how you got access to them and where the scales or the questions came from. Not really like into the weeds detailed, but those really like top line um, insights that you are 
telegraphing and sort of like um, leaving little hints uh, along that this is going to be really important when we get to the next section and when we go into planning. So for the survey, uh, you definitely want to use um, scales to measure the, the big constructs that it is that you're, you're looking for, um, you know, like attitude or perceived knowledge or some sort of behavior or intended behavior, right? Um, and so you'll use a scale for that and um, as you write it up in the situation analysis, you'll probably give the overall um, average of that summed scale together. And then maybe you give me like a couple of different um, points uh, on that where you're going to cut the data and you're going to say, well, this is this public versus this public. You know, people who act this way versus people who said no on that particular question. Or this is males versus females. Or these are, um, let's say, PR pros versus PR students, right? So you're going to cut the data in some kind of a way and, um, and showcase those differences um, as you go into laying out that baseline of where your client is on either um, knowledge, uh, attitude, or behavior for their target publics and the stakeholders that you're going to engage later in the campaign. For the interviews, you want to give those um, big themes that came through in your interviews. And so this is where you'll talk about um, the most uh, salient insights that came out of it of things that, again, you're going to be sort of threading through the rest of your campaign so that folks will um, not be surprised when you come up with a tactic because they're going to be like, oh, that makes total sense because in the research we had found X, Y, Z. Right, so um, make sure that you're you're calling out only the most important pieces, and as with all of this, you want to keep it super conversational. So uh, you get through all of the research. You've done the primary research. You've done the secondary research. Um, you get through all of the research section, and now you actually are coming toward the end of the situation analysis, and you need to sum everything up. So that first step in summarizing everything that you found is sort of a sorting exercise. And in this sorting exercise, we're going to break things off into um, internal factors and external factors, and that they will be positive and negative. So this is our SWOT. Our strengths and weaknesses are internal, and our opportunities and threats are external. And so what you're going to do in your categorization of these different factors that are, are at play for your client and, and relevant to this campaign is you're going to sort things into strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats, and you're going to present that, and it's okay if you present it as like a bulleted list or, you know, a pretty little graphic um, and, you know, it's not written in like full on narrative type of information. That's totally fine. What you should know, though, is you cannot bring up anything new in your SWOT. Your SWOT is a summary of everything that you found in your research that you want to draw people's attention to, whether it's positive or negative, um, and it's categorized, again, as that internal, I have control over it, versus external, I don't have control over it. And so when you're going through your strengths and weaknesses, your internal um, options and then your opportunities and threats, the external things, the external factors, you definitely need to make sure that everything there that's listed has somehow been mentioned before in your situation analysis. So the SWOT is the second to last thing that is in your situation analysis. And then the very last piece of your situation analysis is your problem statement. Some people call it a research statement, which is actually probably a better way to refer to it. Uh, and some people call it an issue statement. I don't really care what you're going to call it. But in this um, issue statement, problem statement, um, or research statement, you are going to now take that summary of the SWOT and you're going to put it in, uh, you're going to boil it down further and you're going to put it into a sentence form. And so as you write a problem statement, you need to talk about um, who's impacted by this problem, when they're impacted by this problem, you're going to talk about where they're impacted by this problem, you're going to give some kind of a metric that goes along with it, um, and uh, you definitely want to make sure that as you do this, you do not prescribe any way to fix it, and you do not assign blame to anybody.
This is just literally as if I were to pull up my, my Google Maps right now and I have that little blinking dot there on my map that tells me this is where you are right now. It doesn't blame me for how I got here or why I'm here or anything like that, but it definitely tells me this is what I, um, this is what I'm doing right now, this is where I am right now, right? And that's what your problem statement is gonna do. It's gonna be a summary of your SWOT and it's going to tell the client in a very focused way, this is where we are, essentially, this is, this is the problem that we're facing as we go into the campaign. So a lot of people will sometimes take their SWOT or their problem statement and they put it at the front of the situation analysis. You can't do that. How, how can you tell me a summary of everything you found when we haven't even found it yet, right? So make sure that those two elements do go at the end. Um, when you move on into the other parts of your campaign, you're going to be calling back to all of those great insights that you went over in your situation analysis, how you like dug at the issue and the problem and that you kind of set forth uh, this prescribed path that you have forward. And so make sure that you're really, um, as you're writing this document, going through all of those important steps in there. So that's the situation analysis, and I hope that this was very helpful for you. Um, make sure in your situation analysis that you make it interesting to read, um, that you tell a story like a narrative, and that you discuss the client, you have um, secondary research to really um, talk about the, the problem or the issues that the client is dealing with or the world in which the client finds himself. Um, and then you wanna go into your primary research and, and, and walk through all of those insights that you found for their campaign. Finally, you're gonna end it all with a SWOT and then a problem statement. And that's your situation analysis. So, happy campaigning.